interest in the topic of radiation in Moscow is not subsiding. In a previous video on my channel I already told about how the press and social networks raised a panic, in the area of Kalamenskoy found radioactive radiation, the background exceeded 50 times. After the series Chernobyl, impressions of which are still fresh, Muscovites are nervous about this issue, it seems to them, and not without reason, that something is always being hidden from them. I found information about how a group of young people with professionals and with a dosimeter went to the zone to look for radiation. You don't even have to climb over the fence to get into the radioactive contamination zone. It is enough just to climb the hill near the Mosporiki railway platform and follow the well-trodden path. You may come across fireplaces and wine bottles on its edges, locals obviously do not mind to sit here. But lately other people have been visiting these places, and they, too, have left eloquent traces of their presence. Here and there you see crumpled white paint jackets, goggles, and respirators the equipment of radiation hunters. They themselves were dressed the same way. The disposable overalls for painting work, gloves and respirator were bought the day before at a construction store, and the goggles were forgotten. The main thing is to cover your eyes and respiratory organs, the specialist warns and hands you a spare pair of construction glasses. Judging by all appearances, gamma radiation here is low. The main thing is to prevent contaminated particles from entering the body. The search dosimeter DKSF 1121 really doesn't show anything bad so far. 120 nanosieverts per hour is even normal for an apartment, explains Sergey. It sounds comforting. To understand correctly, the normal natural radiation background 0.2 microsieverts per hour, that is 200 nanosieverts per hour, in Moscow is often 0.3 microsieverts per hour, and it is also considered the norm in the city. Soon the searchers noticed three birch trees wrapped in food film underneath with a sign of radiation hazards. Most likely, the place was fenced off by some amateur environmentalist. Professionals from NPO Radon, as you can see later, mark the places of contamination in a different way. Near the birches the numbers on our device begin to grow and approach the natural background 200 nanosieverts per hour. The searcher decides to measure alpha and beta radiation. He opens a black suitcase and collects the second, more thorough instrument, dosimeter radiometer DRBP03. With the head, which looks most like a shower, he begins to drive it over the ground inside the film-fenced perimeter, like a doctor with a stethoscope. The dosimeter chirps like in a movie, and the number 38 appears on the screen. It's all within the margin of error, the searcher concludes. Production Waste A whole pile of used overalls is piled next to it. No wonder, nobody has been here in the last few days. Greenpeace environmentalists, municipal deputies, local activists, and journalists. The fact is that here, in the southeastern corner of Kalamenskoy Park, is Moscow's largest nuclear waste repository. And now construction of a new city highway, the southeastern cord, is starting right next to it. The source of the contamination is the Moscow polymetal plant, which produces fuel elements for nuclear power plants. Its fancy white and blue plastics are visible from behind a barbed wire concrete fence. In the middle of the last century, when radiation safety requirements were much more lenient and the country needed a peaceful atom, the plant buried the remains of uranium and thorium ores used in production right outside its fence. How much total radioactive waste there is a debatable question. Some environmentalists say about 800,000 tons. Responsible for the nuclear safety of the capital FSUE radon in 2010, it was then called GUP Mos NPO radon, gave a more modest figure, 100,000 tons. All in all, not a small amount. It is no wonder that the construction of the cord here has stirred up everyone. As a result, assessments vary from Moscow will have a second Chernobyl, this is the position of eco-activists, to the new highway will not pass through areas with special environmental conditions, as assured by Moscow Maritectura. The searchers decided to check everything themselves and to involve professional dosimetrists with normal equipment. The device which was used to measure ecologists is a simple household dosimeter. Just to measure the foodstuffs. But our dosimeters are checked with all the documents, explains one of the stalkers. It is known that the most contaminated areas of the burial ground are between the plant and the Moskva River. 
but we are not particularly interested in them, because the main line will go not there. And it will go between the railroad and the polymetallic plant to the river, where near two railway bridges one more automobile bridge will be constructed. Between the railroad and the slope of the hill where the nuclear plant stands, a strip of grass is a little less than 30 meters wide. But the new road will clearly not fit in this clearing alone. According to the documents, which were presented at the public hearings, only the width of the road will be 34 meters. And yet there will be an additional land allocation for construction. In general, not to disturb the slope does not work. This is the slope we walk on, measuring radiation. High, but not dangerous. By the way, at the plant's fence, the background is quite tiny, 100 nanosieverts per hour. Mushrooms grow in abundance, dewberries, thistles, mushrooms. They pick one and the searchers check it with a dosimeter. Radiation in it is not much, but it is still not worth eating. Particles emitting alpha and beta radiation, once in the body, can cause trouble even in very small quantities. But clothing protects against them quite reliably. Not to mention the layer of earth with which the burial ground is covered. We rarely measure alpha and beta radiation. But gamma radiation is required for the examination of apartments and building sites, explains the searcher. Some blankets or old leather jacket are found underfoot. Young brushwood has been sawed off. Someone periodically clears forest here. As we were walking along the trail, one of the searchers notices that gamma radiation is again jumping up to 239 nanosieverts per hour still at the level of the natural background, but still more than in the neighborhood. In the subway 400 nanosieverts per hour, and no one is afraid to ride, says the searcher. And we examined one granite fountain, it was 800. It's not too bad either. From time to time remnants of brickwork and fragments of reinforced concrete come across. Sergei is especially interested in the latter, because iron is a good accumulator of radiation. But no matter how many searchers put the device to pieces of old slabs or even preserved troughs through which something was once poured from the plant into the river, they did not find any high radiation values there. It's all clear. Finally, the fence turns to the left, and ahead begins the descent to the river, and the road is blocked by a red and white ribbon with printed sheet site of radioactive contamination number 2478. This is the work of radon. The site is irregularly shaped and occupies about 20 square meters. At one spot a pit is dug in which the device first reads 470 nanosieverts per hour, then 1.2 microsieverts per hour, i.e. six times above the natural background. The stalker is clearly interested. In all the time that I work on this device I have never seen such numbers on it. In Moscow you usually do not see such numbers. But don't worry, it's not dangerous to be here. It's not 10 times over. It is dangerous to live here all the time. Near the hole lies a pair of used condoms, asserting the triumph of life over radiation hazards. The inhabitants of the zone. Further to the river, again no deviations from the background. On the right you see a metal fence, fencing off the area near the railway bridge. Behind it, a man in an orange vest is peacefully mowing the lawn. This is where the bridge for the new highway must be built. On the other side of the river, it looks as if some preliminary work is already underway, even an excavator can be seen. Closer to the water goes in the direction of Kolomenskoy an old overgrown road, clearly not particularly used. Sosnovsky's hogweed grows on the unneeded, unmaintained land. Two stray dogs run by. The dosimeter is calm here. Gamma radiation is 140 nanosieverts per hour. The searchers rush up the slope again. They come across some collectors with hatches removed. They can see that there is water flowing from the plant towards the Moskva River. You can see that the collectors have replaced the concrete gutters that we measured before. But the collectors don't sound foul either. There are scraps of striped tape hanging from a tree. Apparently, there was also a polluted area, which then cleaned Radonovsi every year they removed from Kolomenskoy several cubic meters of contaminated soil. This is reminded by a pit, which found at 287 nanosieverts per hour, twice as high as the surrounding area. 
While it was being inspected, the smell of a campfire and some kind of snack came to the searchers. 30 meters away from the place we see Yevgeny, a middle-aged man in a dirty sweater with a feathery wispy beard. Yevgeny willingly talks about himself. He comes from a village in the Smolensk region, worked as a truck driver, but became the cause of an accident, the owner demanded money, so he had to leave the profession. I've been living in this very place for three years now. In the winter, I ride the electric trains to get warm. Where I hide from the rain is a secret. But I feel great. Moreover, I used to cough and suffocate because of my smoking, but when I settled here, I stopped. My airways must have regenerated. I can even dance, Eugene tries to do the gypsy dance. A turkey is cooking on the fire in a large tin, it will be a healthy soup. Eugene generally leads an almost healthy lifestyle, he does not drink, and his only empty bottle is to mashed potato potatoes. But the whole earth is strewn with used tea bags from Princess Nuri, it is Eugene's favorite. He is almost alone in this remote part of the park. Homeless people live there, Eugene points somewhere up and to the northwest. Their tent burned down recently. And other people don't come here. The inhabitant of radioactive zone is careful about cowhopper mushrooms, doesn't eat ubiquitous mushrooms, what am I, a fool, and generally does not take unnecessary risks. The searchers measure Yevgeny with a dosimeter. From his beard to his rubber flip-flops, there is no increased radiation. If anyone has doubts about living here, let them come to me, he says goodbye. Back the searchers decided to go through the bottom. In the clearing along the railroad there is no background excess. In the lower part of the slope, too. But all of this can be deceptive. In 2013, when the construction of the cord was first brought up at a public hearing, the Moscow Polymetal Plant opposed the construction and prepared a 12-point objection signed by Executive Director Vadim Yuryevich Kuznetsov. Here is interesting point 10, which stated the following, the project does not foresee the possible presence on the territory of the slope to Kursk direction of Russian railways from the territory of JSC MZP contamination of the past years with radioactive wastes, RW, which require utilization and the following burial. The current statements by Moscow Maritektura show that this flaw in the project has never been corrected. And our findings today show that there is clearly something radioactive inside the slope. It is relatively safe to be here. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.